Get dream song, get dream song Push into the camp, start singing our song Get dream song, get dream song We are Get Dream Nerds This is Jeff from Airstream Nerds and today we're going to talk about winterizing our Airstream. So the first step in winterizing the Airstream is to get the water out of the water heater. And the best way to do that is to just pull the plug. But before you do that, you have to go inside and switch the water heater bypass valve to close. Now, if you look in the video down here in the corner, you'll see that right down in here is the valve. There's a hole underneath the bed in this model. This is the uh, front bed twins, um, 2015 Flying Cloud. There's a hole under the mattress in the, um, in the wood, right above the water heater. And there's a hose coming out of the water heater and coming this way, and there's a bypass valve. And what the bypass valve does is it basically um, segregates the water heater from the rest of your water system so, so um, you can drain it without affecting the rest of the system. So you could literally bypass the water heater valve and use your camper normally, only you wouldn't have any water heater and you'd have a water heater full of water if it was filled up and you had it turned on. Anyway, so the first thing you want to do is you want to drain this. Now, I bought a socket set on Amazon, link will be down below, um, basically for lug nuts. But it is a 7 8 inch socket. You put it on the, I can't remember if this, the stock one was plastic, but this is a nylon, nylon uh, threaded cap. Um, they're very cheap. I've got a handful of them inside the camper in my tools. Um, just unscrew it. You'll notice there's got a Teflon tape on it. Unscrew it and the water will start coming out. Now to get the water to come out faster, you should release the temperature pressure valve. Now temperature pressure valve is a device that, well, when you heat water, you heat anything, it expands. So you have to have some sort of safety measure for your water heater or you'd be laying on top of a bomb. So what this does is if the pressure or the heat gets to a certain level, this pops out and the water flows out of here, relieving the pressure. So release that and it's like it's like um, cutting a hole in the end of a of a gallon jug when you're pouring it it just allows the air eliminates the vacuum and your water will flow right out so um, some people take a wand on a hose shove it up in there and clean clean up the inside I already have my hose shut off for the year uh, I'll do that in the spring just clean it all out real good um, shouldn't be I cleaned it out in the spring and um, you know just get the scale or any debris that's inside of there that builds up. So that's the first thing. Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to go around the other side of the camper. And as you can see down below, the video in the corner, right about there, there's two valves under there. Switch them both, those are your low point valves. Now for your water storage, there's another valve in between the tires right in there that I also open, even though I don't use my water storage, the tank is empty, um, I still open it. Um, so you're gonna do that. You're gonna make sure that your valves are all closed inside your, inside your camper. Let that drain for a few. And then once, once you're satisfied that it's not any more water is pouring out of it, make sure you close those valves back up. Um, Then you're going to get a, a connector that looks something like this. Well, minus the shutoff. I just had this extra shutoff laying around, so I put it on here. But it's basically, this is hose thread here, and this is for a air compressor. And you're going to put that onto your water connection to the camper. Screw that all on. Then, as you see in the video, you get your your compressor, in my case, I use a Vi-Air compressor. Put that hose up to the um, compressor. Turn on your compressor and you'll see the 
or you'll hear the pressure build up and then cut off. It might take, you know, a, a few seconds because it's got a lot of water pipes to fill up with air before it hits a stop. Like I said, make sure all your valves are, are shut off. Otherwise, you'll just be blowing air through a pipe, um, an open-ended pipe. Once the pressure is built up and it cuts off, one, one um, at a time, come in, turn on your hose, turn on this, turn on this. Don't forget your shower outside. Um, don't forget your shower inside. Turn on the hot, turn on the cold, get the water. The water will flow. Don't forget your bathroom. Come in the bathroom, turn that one on. And last but not least, do not forget your shower. I mean your toilet. Um, a lot of people have forgotten their toilet um, and that valve is cracked. It's kind of a pain in the rear end to change, but it can be fixed. Um, once you've done all that, what you should be spitting a little bit of water. Uh, some people stop it right there. But I like to do double, and I take a RV antifreeze. Now, very important, RV antifreeze is different than car antifreeze. Um, as you can see, RV antifreeze is safe um, for water systems. Um, you do not want to use car antifreeze. Um, otherwise, you're going to be poisoning your trailer, and it's a mess to clean up if you even can clean it up um, sufficiently. So you get your couple of gallons of RV antifreeze and in our camper below the refrigerator kind of below this panel and there's a couple of screws here right about here as you see in the image there in the corner the water pump is there um, I have put these uh, the winterizing kit on there it's basically just a a valve and some hose connections and you connect your hose into the into where the, the cap is make sure you you keep track of that gasket um, you drop it into your top of your RV antifreeze make sure all your valves are closed and you turn on your pump right there and you'll see that gallon jug of RV antifreeze as you see in my picture just suck right up now, don't do the mistake that I did and forget to close your low point valves because all I did was blow a, a, a three quarters of a gallon of antifreeze all over the ground. Um, so make sure those are closed up. It'll pump until the system is full, just like with the air. And then you go one by one, turning on your water until pink stuff flows out. Don't forget the, the nozzle here. Um, but again, bathroom, sink and toilet, shower. Do not forget your outdoor shower. Um, once all those are flowing pink, then should be, be, you know, around two gallons, a gallon and a half. Um, then what I like to do is I like to go back in with what, what little bits left. And even though we've poured it out of here and poured it out of here, instead of just pouring it on the ground, I dump it in for the P-traps in the, in the two sinks and the shower. Anyway, once you're done that, button up everything and you have a winterized trailer. Now, I've done this a couple of times. I've read on the forums, I've read in books, I've read online, I've read everywhere different ways to do this, and I think I've combined a couple of different ways. If you have any comments or corrections or ways that you like to do it, please comment below and let us know um, so I can maybe change my ways next year. Um, otherwise, I should be good to go in the spring with no broken pipes from, from freezing anyway. And, um, Everything's winterized now. Uh, this is Jeff from Airstream Nerds. See you on the next trip.